Welcome back to Matt's Automotive Channel. In this video, uh, we're going to start pulling the motor. Um, we'll take a look at the motor, see what kind of condition it's in. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the border scope down the uh, cylinders here and uh, see what kind of debris we may be in there. We'll also look into the valves. Uh, ultimately, probably going to end up pulling off the heads. Um, obviously, the cams have a lot of rust on them, so they're definitely going to need to be cleaned up. Uh, probably the valves as well. So anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to get started here, um, we already know that there's just uh, one bolt in the bell housing there holding the motor and the transmission together. I went ahead and put a couple ropes there and uh, threw the bell housing bolts uh, just to keep the transmission up uh, temporarily. Uh, I got a four jack under here. And as you can see, when I step on this, it raises the motor a little bit or the transmission anyway and uh, that'll take the tension off of it while we pull the motor out. And then once the motor's out, uh, we can lower the jack and then the transmission should be held in place here by these uh, couple of ropes. Okay, let's put some bolts in here. So we have a lifting point for the crane. Okay, now that we got the motor out, uh, we can go ahead and lower the transmission. So, hopefully uh, that little brace there will hold the transmission up while we have the engine out. So let's go ahead and see if this is gonna work. All right, way to the transmission on those ropes. So looks like this will work just fine. Uh, looks pretty grody. We're probably going to end up putting a uh, new throwout bearing, maybe even a clutch fork, new pivot ball on all that. Um, but yeah, these are holding it just fine. And this is only having to hold about half the weight of the transmission because the, uh, the rear part of the transmission is being held in by the uh, cross brace on the back. Now getting this motor in is going to be much more difficult because we're going to have the long tubes on it at that point. And I don't know about stuffing the long tubes through there. It may be that we end up having to pull the transmission and assembling it all outside and then slipping it back there. And if that doesn't work, we may have to even uh, drop the K-member and then just bolt it all up and then just put the engine in from the bottom side. So I don't know, uh, to be determined. And another thing is that, uh, that shaft there for the steering. Um, I believe that has to go through those headers there. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge too. It may be just, it may be that we just end up removing that column and then putting it in um, after everything's back in place. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started and take a look at this motor and see what kind of condition it's in. Yeah, this thing's uh, definitely been apart before. Uh, it's a little bit of an excessive amount of RTV uh, sealing here. Uh, wow, that's definitely rested up pretty good. Uh, no pilot bearing in there. So anyway, yeah, we're going to end up pulling all this apart. Uh, but for the time being, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get these. Uh, well, we'll get on the engine stand first. So we'll get the spark plugs out of there and put the bore scope down there and see what the inside of the cylinders look like. Okay, now we have the engine uh, transferred over to the engine stand. So let's go ahead and pull those spark plugs and take a look down into those cylinders. Boy, I tell you, uh, Somebody, I think, over torqued these uh, spark plugs or they got rusty in place or something. Um, quite a bit of force to get these off, and I did put some penetrant down in those holes. <clears throat> okay. I got all the plugs loose, so let's just go ahead and start pulling them. have been used before and you can see here that there's a little bit of corrosion here that's probably why it was difficult uh, getting these things out okay 
and these here are pretty much the same thing. You can see that these plugs do look a little different. Uh, this particular one here looks a little bit white, whereas it looks like these cylinders may have been running a little richer. Okay, let's take a look and see what uh, we see down these cylinders here. <clears throat> Okay, here does definitely look like there's some debris on the sides of the cylinder there, as you can see. Yeah, there's all kinds of, uh, I think some droppings made it in there. We're going to be pulling the heads off. Yeah, same thing in all of these. Yeah, you can see here in cylinder 7, there's a fair amount of debris that's in the bottom of this one. And number eight's looking pretty bad too. Sorry for this poor video here, but it uh, doesn't really matter. We're going to be pulling the heads off, and that's going to reveal what's under there pretty clearly. Okay, let's take a look at these intake ports here, uh, where the valves are, and uh, wow, that's really bad. Oh, nice. There's quite a bit of debris down there. That's uh, on top of one of the valves, by the way, so it's a good thing we didn't try to turn this motor over. A lot of this debris would have went in. I guess it doesn't really matter anyway, since we're taking it apart, but still. You could damage some stuff, um, depending on what's in there. Look at this. It's just horrible. Let's take a look at the other side. Yeah, there's definitely debris in each of these. This side's not quite as bad, but still. Nonetheless, quite a bit of debris in this motor. And then here's the uh, drain holes for the oil that go back down into the uh, oil pan. I'm sure a bunch of stuff has ended up down there too. So it'll be interesting to pull the oil pan off and see what we find down there. Um, just stuff everywhere. It's too bad that they just at least didn't put the valve covers back on when they stored this thing. Especially outside. Another quick thing to note here is just looking at the chain, see how tight it is on here. It's pretty tight here. Uh, however, we go over to this side and you can see a lot of movement there. So I don't know if it's just the tension or if there's some wear on these sprockets or the chain itself, but uh, that doesn't seem good. Then I uh, take a look down here and we got significant play here. So. It doesn't look like the tensioner is doing its job. Um, it's a good thing we're pulling this motor back apart. If it were to go back together like this, uh, I don't think it would live too long. Here's another thing I just noticed. Um, the sensor going into the oil pan here. Look at the uh, wiring harness here, and it's just broken off. So it looks like everyone previously pulled the motor, forgot to disconnect that, and just sheared it off. The next order of business is going to be to remove the timing chain covers. However, we're first going to have to remove the crank pulley. Okay, before we go any further, let's just rotate this motor upside down and just see what falls out. I'm just kind of curious at this point. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh my gosh. There's some more debris that just came out. You can tell that this thing is just filled with all kinds of stuff. Yeah, a lot of uh, things have entered the motor from the top side, but I tell you, look at the bottom side of this motor. Pretty darn clean. Looks like the block is in pretty good shape. And yeah, it looks like some new head gaskets too. Too bad we're just gonna have to pull all that off. Just look at all this stuff that's in here. It's just amazing.
You know, I just remembered this is a block out of a newer model car. And um, it may be that there is no accommodation for the sensor on the 97. Uh, wouldn't surprise me because I kind of looked down here and I'm just not seeing a wiring harness that would go towards the uh, oil pan there anyway. So it may be that uh, we'll just cut this off completely. I'm just going to sweep this up real quick just to see how much, just for kick, just to see how much came out here. Just by flipping it over and uh, you know there's going to be way more still stuck in the motor. Okay, that's just by flipping it over and just what gravity brought out of the motor. There's got to be way more inside. Okay, now let's go ahead and start pulling this cover. Okay, and then we have a couple pens down here on the bottom where the oil pan is. A little bit of RTV down here, it's making it stick a bit. Here we go. That is a lot of slack there. Okay, now just for kicks, um, I'm going to try turning the motor just ever so slightly. Um, if you have a 32mm uh, socket, it will slide right over this uh, crankshaft here with a little keyway. And uh, that's a perfect fit there. So let's see if we can just turn this a little bit. Oh my god, it's, it's seized. That's a good thing. We didn't just put this back together and think it was going to start up. Yeah, it's seized up pretty damn good. It should spin freely and it's not. So my hunch is that uh, water got into the cylinders and probably rusted uh, the piston rings to the cylinder wall. That's my guess. So anyway, we'll take a look at that once we get a little further along here and get this apart. Okay, I was a little concerned here since we can't spin the motor, I can't get the uh, number one cylinder to top dead center. Uh, there is a tool uh, for setting it, and it goes on right here. You can see there's a little keyway here, and uh, it just fits on. And you can see that that little stud there is supposed to go through here. When that's lined up, that should put you at top dead center. It's pretty darn close. Not quiet, but I cannot turn this crank at all. Uh, so I think I'm just going to have to go with that. The other thing I noticed is, you know, we we saw a lot of slack here in this chain. And uh, if you look at the tensioner here, it does not seem to want to push out on it. Retract it there and it doesn't come back. So yeah, there's just a tremendous amount of slack here. So we're probably going to have to replace these tensioners. Now I do realize that they're hydraulically driven. You know, when the oil, when it creates oil pressure, it pumps and then the oil pressure goes in here and helps push out. But it should have enough to keep this extended. Uh, it looks really, really weak. So this side, right side is not so bad. Um, but this, this left uh, definitely needs to be replaced. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove this tensioner. Now, as you can see on the back side of this tensioner, um, it goes against the block here where it builds oil pressure, and it goes into this little hole here, and then it'll create additional pressure uh, to push that chain out. Okay, it's going to remove the chain guide now. Okay, now let's remove the lower chain guide. These are 8 mm bolts.
I wanted to point out here, I was uh, marking the uh, chains here and make sure everything lined up with the uh, timing marks. And uh, the cams are okay, but you come down here to the crank and then we see that this one here is a whole tooth off. So that's very concerning. Okay, now I'm going to take the chains off. All right, another thing to mention, um, if you look here on the left side head, uh, you see that there's a freeze plug right here. But if you go over to this side, uh-oh, it's missing. So it's this is why it's so great to take the motor out because you would never see this if it was in the car. And then you'd put the engine back together and then you would have some major problems, like a huge coolant leak right there. So anyway, just to point out, that's something we're gonna have to address. Okay, so now I think you can unbolt the heads. Okay, so what we'll do basically is work our way from the outside in in small increments. And that way we won't stress the head as we loosen the bolts up. Okay, we have them all loosened now, so we now can unzip them off with the impact. Okay, now we can take out all the head bolts. Okay, now let's go ahead and pull the head off and see what we got here. Okay, so, wow, look at all the debris there. And the droppings and everything that we thought was gonna be in there, it found its way in. Look at this. Unbelievable. All right, so let's go ahead and vacuum some of this stuff out. All right, and as we take a closer look here, I think we can see why the engine seized. If you look on the uh, cylinder wall here it's all rusted over so i'm pretty darn sure that the uh, piston rings just rusted themselves to the wall unfortunate and i'm sure the other side's going to reveal something very similar all right i'll spare you the video of me taking this side off but i'll show you the results all right here we go with the other side all the bolts are off and actually this side's not Quite as bad. I'll show you here. We do have some debris though. There's some more of the sunflower seeds. And a little bit more debris there. So good thing we're taking this apart. We've got to get all this out. The thing that's kind of unfortunate here is that we're gonna to have to pull the pistons completely out because these uh, cylinder walls need to be uh, honed to make them nice and smooth and get some good cross hatching in there again. So yeah, this is gonna be a complete motor teardown. Yeah, another thing I just noticed, uh, these motor mounts aren't as great as I thought they were originally. As you can see here, they've seen their better days. That's just too much slop in there. And one on the other side is just as bad. So we will need to order up some new mounts. All right, as you can see, we definitely got a work cut out for us here. Uh, looks like a further long road ahead of us here. So anyway, this video is getting a little long, so I think I'm just gonna cut it at this point. So again, if you like this content, uh, please like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you'll be reminded of videos moving forward. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.